All right, 820, solving absolute value equations. All right, let's go. So, number one, remember, you have to isolate the absolute value. Coincidentally, or fortunately, all of these are isolated already. So, step one is actually done in all of these. Step two, you analyze the answer and see if the answer is positive. Right? It's got to be isolated, which it is. And then the answer has to be positive. So since it's positive, number one, that is, now we can split this into two. 3G plus 14 is equal to 7. 3G plus 14 is equal to negative 7. So remember, it's the answer that gets um, changed to negative. Never, ever, ever change the inside of the absolute value. Always change the answer. So this is minus 14. So 3G is equal to negative 7. Divide both sides by 3. G is equal to negative 7 over 3. Minus 14, minus 14. 3G is equal to negative 21. Divide both sides by 3. G is equal to negative seven. All right, simple calculations. Two answers, always two answers, unless it's equal to zero. Okay, number two, negative. It's isolated and negative. So the negative is what makes it no solution. Right, because in absolute value, the answer must be positive. Well, here we see the answer is not positive, it's negative. So there is no G that we could plug in that would ever make this true. No solution. Number three. So 43 is positive, so 4R plus 7 is equal to 43. 4R plus 7 is equal to negative 43. Minus 7. So it's going to be 4R. 43 minus 7. So 7 is 3 and 4. So 36. Divide both sides by 4. R is equal to 9. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Minus 7, minus 7. They're both negative. So 43 plus 7, basically is negative 50, right? You keep the negative sign. Divided by 4. So R is equal to negative 50 over 4, which is 25 over 2. So 9 and negative 25 over 2. Number 4. Again, it's positive. So 6 minus 3K is equal to 21. 6 minus 3K is equal to negative 21. Okay. I'm going to minus 6. So negative 3K is equal to 21 minus 6, 15. Divide both sides by negative 3. K is equal to negative 5. 15 divided by 3. Negative 3. Then we have minus 6, minus 6. Negative 3K is equal to, again, they're both negative, so I'm adding 21 plus 6 is 27, and then they stay negative. Divide both sides by negative 3. K is equal to negative divided by negative is positive. 27 divided by 3 is 9. K is equal to 9. Number 5. Again, it's positive and the absolute value is isolated by itself. So 1 fourth X minus 3 is equal to 10. 1 fourth X minus 3 is equal to negative 10. So this is going to be plus 3, plus 3 
1 fourth x is equal to 13. Now, a rookie move would be to do this. And people get confused, right? Which I get it, right? I get it. It's, you're trying to get rid of it, so you're dividing. But what they teach, I would assume in like elementary, right? Fifth grade, keep, change, flip is what they typically say. You keep the top. So this is when you're dividing by a fraction, right? I have a fraction dividing by a fraction. Um, you keep the top, change the multiplication, and you flip the bottom. Or you just take that result and say, okay, if I want to get rid of a fraction, you just multiply by the reciprocal, both sides. Four over one. Four over one is simply four. So cancels. So x is equal to 13 times 4. So 13 times 2 is 26. 26 times 2 is 52. So x is equal to 52. Watch, let's try it again. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. So this is 1 fourth x is equal to negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. All right, I want to get rid of 1 over 4. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So x is equal to negative 7 times 4, negative 28. Six, we're halfway there. Let's go. All right. Isolated, it's positive, so we can split it into two. Now notice I strike my z's because z's and twos look alike, particularly mine. And two thirds z minus six is equal to negative 12. So on the left, we're adding six, adding six. So two thirds z is equal to 12 plus six is 18. All right, getting z by itself, taking what we just learned is 3 over 2, 3 over 2, where right, we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Cancels on the left. Z is equal to, okay, there's two ways of doing this. We can multiply 18 times 3 and then divide by 2. Nothing wrong with that. Or before you put them together, you can realize that 18 and 2 cancel. One's on top, one's on bottom. They're both even. So this would just be 9. 9 times 3. 27. Right. No need to divide. The 2 would become a 1, basically. Right. 18 divides by 2 nine times. On the right, we're adding 6. Adding 6. So 2 thirds z is equal to negative 6. Multiply both sides by 3 over 2. Cancels on the left. So z is equal to 6 times 3 divided by 2. This one's easy. But we could do the little cancellation trick again. 2 and 6 cancel. 2 goes into 6 3 times. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 3 times 3 is 9. You might have to watch that a couple times to understand what happened there. Okay, number 7. So here, things get a little weird, right? Because it's... It's equal to x. 3x minus 4 absolute value is equal to x. Um, don't get confused. Stick to the script, right? Stick, stick to what we've been doing and don't change anything. So this is going to be 3x minus 4. So I use black. 3x minus 4 equals x. And... 3x minus 4 is equal to negative x. All right, so if we solve this for x, we get negative 3 minus, or minus 3 rather, 3x. So we get negative 4 is equal to negative 4x. Divide both sides by negative 4. And x is equal to 1. Let's check our answer. I plug in 1. 
1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And it's equal to 1. So that is correct. X is equal to 1. On the right-hand side, we add 4. No, we don't. We add 3x, sorry. Do I want to add 3x? Look. Oh my goodness, we're subtracting x. So this is going to be 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Plus 4, plus 4. We get 2x is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 2. Check our answer. If I plug in 2, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2, which is x is equal to 2. Okay, so, next, so positive 1 and 2. 1 and 2 for number 7. All right, number 8. We have 6x now. So 8x minus 1 is equal to 6x. I'm going to work that over here. 8x minus 1 is equal to 6x. So if I minus 6x minus 6x, this is going to be 2x minus 1 equals 0. Plus 1 plus 1. 2x is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 1 half. Right, half of 8 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, and then 6 times 1 half is 3. So x equals 1 half satisfies this. Okay, now we look at 8x minus 1 is equal to negative 6x. So if I subtract 8x minus 8x, we get negative 1 is equal to negative 14x. Divide both sides by negative 14. X is equal to 1 over 14. If you plug that in, it, it'll work. Right, one over, 8 times 1 over 14, 8 over 14, which is 4 over 7. 4 over 7 minus 1, negative 3 over 7, which Absolute value of negative 3 over 7 is 3 over 7. So then on the right-hand side, 6 times 114 would be 6 over 14, which reduces to 3 over 7. So 3 over 7 works out. Okay, you, you could do the math on that. All right, 9. We have 9 minus 2x absolute value is equal to 10 plus 3x. So we're going to take the positive version and the negative version, just like before, like always stick to the script. So we are running out of room. So this is going to look like this. It's going to be real tight. So 9 minus 2x is equal to 10 plus 3x. Solving this, we get plus 2x plus 2x. So 9 is equal to 10 plus 5x. Minus 10 minus 10. This is going to be negative 1, 5x. Divide both sides by 5. x is equal to negative 1 fifth. So here, when we plug this back in, you're going to get 3 times negative 1 fifth is negative 3 fifths, but 10 minus three fifths right nine and two fifths um it works out it works out because it's still positive right it's still positive so this will definitely be a solution if we take the negative version so nine minus two x is equal to negative ten plus three x When you distribute the negative, we get 
9 minus 2x is equal to negative 10 minus 3x. We add 2x. So 9 is equal to negative 10 minus x. We add 10. We add 10. So 19 is equal to negative x. Divide both sides by negative 1 to isolate x. And we see that x is equal to negative 19. So now, let's test that number. All right, negative 19, if I plug that in here. Negative 19 times 3, that's 57. Negative 57. So negative 57 plus 10 is negative 47. That means negative 19 won't work, right? Because this outside piece must be positive. It must be. Negative 19 is invalid. Okay. Number 10. So this is going to be... 3x plus 7 is equal to 5x. 3x plus 7 is equal to negative 5x. So on these weird ones, right, you always got to plug in your answer into the original function just to make sure that it's valid, right? Because at the end of the day, this right here needs to be positive. Whatever x I plug in needs to be positive. So this is going to be minus 3x, minus 3x, 7. 2x divided by 2, x is equal to 7 halves. That's a positive number times 5, which is still a positive number, so that answer is valid. Minus 3x, minus 3x, so 7 is equal to negative 8x. Divide both sides by the negative 8, and x is equal to negative 7 over 8, which is a negative number times 5, but it's still a negative number. So that means this one is no good, right? Because you can't have a negative number. It must be positive. It must be positive. Okay. Is there a back? Of course there is. All right. So describe the error in the solution below. So what's happening? Okay. I see what's happening. They said that, okay. They split into two, positive 3n minus 1, or when you make it negative, when you distribute, you get negative 3n plus 1. All right, so this line is good. Next line, what they do? They minus n minus n gives me 2n, or Minus n minus n. So negative four n. Oh no, what would they do? They went this way. Actually, let's just stay in the same row. Like, because th there's a lot happening. So they subtracted n to get two n. Then they added one. Added 1 to get negative 6. And then divided by 2 to get n is equal to negative 3. Okay. I like it. <coughs> so then on the left, well, let's plug it in. Right? Once we think we got the answer, we plug it in. Always plug it in. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10, right? It's negative. This doesn't work, right? This doesn't work. Negative 3 does not work. Negative 3 does not work. So on the right-hand side, so there was the error, right? Negative 3 is an invalid solution. Right, because the absolute value must be positive. All right, on the right, 
they distributed the negative, okay? And then they added three in to both sides to get four in. They added seven to get eight. They divided both sides by four. N is equal to two. Is that true? When you plug in two, you get three times two is six. Six minus one is five, which is positive. So the only solution to this is N is equal to two. Right? We learned that this outside part, the, the answer, quote unquote, must be positive. All right. Good luck, guys.